Hello everyone and welcome back to the Velvet Lounge and I am continuing our series on buttons. Why? Because buttons have a lot of value if you know what to look for. Most buttons have zero value or very, very, very little. So little that it's less than a fraction of a penny. However, if you are creative, if you're willing to think outside of the sewing box, then you will be able to turn those buttons into cash easily. That's the thing. This is easy. So it's nothing that you have to go out and buy expensive materials. The only thing you need are the right adhesives. So you need that. You need to make sure you read the instructions on those adhesives carefully. If there are any precautions, which there should be, follow them to the letter without fail because some of um, the glues and adhesives are out there are toxic to yourself, to animals, and you want to make sure that you don't injure yourself, your child, your husband, your wife, your pets, you know, nature. So just make sure you read the instructions. Also make sure you have some newspaper or whatever recycled paper you're using to put down on your work surface. A lot of these adhesives, once you stick it, it's clicked in there. You can't unstick it. So make sure you sort of plan out your design. Um, so this, to me, I always think about, like I know a lot of folks that crochet, that um, knit, stuff like that, or they paint or do other things, create jewelry, you know, using beads and stuff, whatever. Um, this is really a good way to maybe segue into another arts and craft um, type venue, but, you know, make something that is going to also hold memories and meaning um, for yourself and your family. So that's why I'm starting with memory jugs and I'm also other memory memorial type items, such as, as you can see, this is a dress form. Um, or part of the mannequin body. You can use mannequins as well. And all you do is you simply talk to your family. Maybe you have a large enough button collection right now. And using buttons, you can also add in other items. So if you have broken pieces of jewelry, watches, tools that are tiny, you know, little items are really what you're looking for. Um, and hopefully they have some meaning to yourself and your family members, not just your immediate family, but extended family, hopefully also as well. And you can create these memory items. You simply find an interesting jug or bottle and, you know, you now have a work of art. And just to, you know, let you know this, this caveat is everything on this particular page is actually in a museum. So this type of artwork goes back hundreds of years. Um, it was inexpensive to do because you're using what you have at hand in the little bits and bobs that you've collected over the decades. And the materials um, to put these together were really cheap and just extra stuff you had laying around, a glass jug, um, some window putty. A lot of these were made just like that with those two materials. So they're really easy to do. They're beautiful to look at. It's, you know, just imagine sitting there at, you know, Thanksgiving dinner, for for example, and talking about how great grandma had this on her wedding dress. And this is um, great grandpa's military um, button from, you know, when he was in the Korean War. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this piece of porcelain is, you know, something that great, great, great grandma had. Um, and unfortunately, her grands, her son knocked it off of the mantle and they ended up with this one little broken piece. But look at how it's incorporated into this memory jug and it's just beautiful. So <clears throat> it's really easy to especially take your less expensive or low to no value buttons and still create, even for modern day buttons, you know, these really cool um, items that you can actually add to a gift. 
Um, this is one where the person, they um, simply took the white push pins that you could buy at any fabric, fabric store or even a craft store. And they took um, like two hole and four hole buttons and they layered the buttons, larger button to a smaller button, put two pins in it. This underneath is a styrofoam ball. They added this piece of ribbon, and the only thing I would have done is on the ribbon, I would have put a message, because if these are like family buttons, that, or let's say they're grandma's buttons, I would have put, you know, grandma bossy's buttons, you know, and I, if she's alive, I would put her um, date of birth. If she's not alive, I would put her date of birth and date of death um, so that and then you hand these out, you know, as just an extra loving, thoughtful gift. You know, people, you know, would really appreciate it. And it's something that could be passed down, you know, through their families. The other thing is great way to um, recycle boxes like really awesome way or even if you have that piece of luggage um, is to take and simply go crazy with your less expensive or cheap buttons with a glue <laughs> so you're just going I mean awesome project to work on with kids um, like I said just be careful of the type of glue you're using it might not be appropriate for kids um, to work with that type of glue and you can just decorate away. This actually has a locking mechanism. The key is stuck. In, I think the key is stuck in there and then it has the little handle at the top. And so now you have a $3 and 50 cent, you know, box from the 1960s combined with maybe $8 of buttons because although there's hundreds of them, they're really cheap buttons. And now you just made something worth about 60 I would say on the low side, $40, higher side, 60 to 65 And so great for resale as well, you know, as long as you're willing to be creative. Next, we have wall art. And you'll see a couple examples of this. And this is simply where someone, you know, recycled a picture, you know, the, um, the artist frame with a canvas and or... They may have went out and purchased one that was brand new. They, they are relatively inexpensive. But if you're going to recycle these, the only thing you have to do is decide what color you want for your background. And in this case, they used white or an off-white. And you have to paint probably three layers of, you know, a good white primer paint on this so that you can cover up the artwork that was underneath, let it dry 100%. I would even say let it dry for three or four days before using it. Then you, this person simply drew the design of this tree and obviously went to town with their buttons. The other thing they could have done with this is, you know, each branch of this could be a family member's name. So perhaps, you know, Aunt Jenny donated these buttons and Grandma Betty, you know, um, donated these and Grandpa Willie had these from his military days. And you could actually just put the person's name there and maybe like a date of birth or something like just a little, I would say no more than three to four words and number combinations and you have a special, special piece of artwork. The only thing I would say is always sign your artwork and put the date of creation, even if it's just the year. It just makes it more special. Even if you're reselling these, it just makes it more special. This is a famous picture of the button staircase. Um, and this staircase is very tall. It goes down to oblivion <laughs> and almost up to heaven. And um, what this artist did is took like buttons that were donated, just millions of them and put them on each step. As you can see, um, you can sort of use this idea in your own home. However, with a modification, um, someone walking on this will break their neck. I can tell you if 10 people went up this, probably two would end up falling in, or twisting an ankle. So what you would do is simply decorate the riser versus the step. 
And once again, using the right adhesive. So the, especially if you have an arts and crafts style home or a quirky, cool home, it's a great way to bring more visual interest to your staircase. And like I said, just put them on the riser so that the step is still safe. And also make sure you use the right adhesive so that these are not falling off and causing a falling hazard. So I love, this is like one of my favorite pictures. Next, clothing. You can go crazy with clothing and buttons, especially using them as a decorative element versus a utilitarian element. Um, this person was rather reserved, so they put, you know, buttons on the left and the right sides and simply put them in a row, but you can create, you know, music notes, you can create words, you can create, you know, animal shapes, whatever you want with your buttons. I would just recommend that you sew them on to the material versus gluing them. Even if it's a material, a glue that's made for material, I would still sew these on if, unless you're just going to use this as like an art display. But if you're going to wear it, the item, obviously it will need washing in the future. And what you want to do when you wash is, like I said, first of all, sew the buttons on. Do not use glue. Secondly, is when you wash the item, you want to put it into a laundry garment bag or a thin pillowcase. And when you wash it, obviously, the, if any buttons do somehow haphazardly fall off, they're contained and they will not damage your machines. Also, it's more gentle in the washing cycle because you don't want to damage your artwork. Also, if you have like pearl buttons for this, you would want to use like the thicker pearl buttons because um, pearls are, you know, or even glass. Uh, pearl glass, obviously little chippings could happen and that could accumulate in your machine. But if you use a laundry garment bag or a thin pillowcase, then all of that will be contained. Just make sure you check the pillowcase or garment bag after you take your clothing out of the, the laundry to make sure there's nothing in it so that if there is, you could dispose of it or if you need to make a repair, you can do that as well. So I love the idea. I have like a jacket that I'm going to like be decorating soon. And the other idea, which I am really surprised more people don't do this because this is a great way to get the kids involved, you know, grandma, grandpa, your ma, your pa, whatever, your whole family, brothers, sisters. Um, tabletops are really easy because really you could do this using a window putty or you could use the same type of, um, um, ingredient that you use when you put up tile, like a tiling putty, I think it's called. Um, and simply you, pr you know, clean the table, you, you know, put your, um, adhesive down there and then you start decorating away. You could do this free form without any rhyme or reason. Obviously you could create patterns and designs. Um, this one is rather reserved. Um, I know someone who actually created a coffee table. It was an old coffee table that belonged to their great grandparents and the table, um, they were thinking about like stripping it, refinishing it, this and that, and whatever. And they decided that if they did that, they wouldn't have liked it as much and it wouldn't have been as personal. So what they did is they actually created this cool octagon design and it has like hundreds of little octagons and a few bigger ones on it. And he actually asked um, his family members for buttons, you know, if they could donate them. They, you know, got some from their old clothes. Some people already had bins and boxes of buttons that they gave him. And he had um, like a family day. So you know how you do family game night? He did sort of like, let's make this table cool night. And they actually, he had the design already like mapped out and they actually helped put it all together. And underneath what they did on the underside is they actually noted who donated buttons and they put a little information about that person. I think it was just like their name, date of birth, something like that. And um, they also on the other side noted who worked on the table. So I thought that was really, really great. And in the middle, um, they put, um, I think it was like the grandma and grandpa's name that weren't alive anymore. So it was like a memorial to them. So that's really cool. Another idea is if you have a clock that doesn't work, um, this is a great way to decorate that clock. 
Um, they used actually a window putty here and they went to town, which is great. They even added some little flags, which is funny and a spider in the center. So they were getting into their like Ozzy Osbourne side or something, or maybe their steampunk side. And this might actually just be a paper cutout on top of like this old clock shape. I actually have a clock, an eight day clock that's like this, that we absolutely like have no use for. So this is a great idea for recycling as well as using those buttons and taking something old and making it new again or making it super interesting like this. Um, another idea is our shadow boxes. Like, you know, yes, you'll, you might have nothing but buttons in your shadow box and maybe each little component, each little box is dedicated to a family member. And on top of this, you could actually put like a sliver of fancy tea stain um, paper with some calligraphy writing or something on it. Um, noting like which branch of the family that came from or which member of the family. Um, so, or like this person did, they incorporated other little bits and bobs as well. So, you know, you're, you're only limited by your imagination. So you sort of just want to make sure you're thinking. And then the other thing that someone did, and they're trying to sell this for $33, which I do not know why it's so expensive, but is they took um, buttons and they decorated the top only of a jar. So unlike the memory jars that are decorated from top to bottom, this is only decorated on the top. And what they did is, you know, they obviously, and these are some, you know, better buttons. So I don't know, this is what they wanted to do. It's fine. Um, the bottom, this is the lip of the jar and down here is the bottom of it. There's nothing. It's the original, you know, jar in that portion is the original lip. But the other thing that you could do with something like this is simply like decorate the lid. So maybe you have a bunch of baby food jars or something and you're like, what can I do with these? You can actually just decorate the lids and create a paperweight. So you could create a paperweight and then underneath where you could see the underside of the lid, it's going to be white probably. And what you would do is simply put a picture in there, you know, or maybe a phrase that you like, just get some decent construction paper, start writing or get, you know, some construction paper and you could print out a photo that you like from the um, internet or from your own photo albums and then you shape it the same shape as the bottom of the lid and push it right in there. It'll stay in there pretty much forever. You could put a little glue on the outer rim of your cutout, you know, just to make sure it doesn't pop out ever. But, you know, that's a way of upcycling, recycling as well. Um, this is, I, I can imagine all the English people should be doing this. Uh, where is it? I just clicked. Oh, there it is. Um, this, <laughs> tea, I'll be, and I'm giggling because I see so many teapots that I'm like, like, why would you buy that teapot? But I don't know what the history of the teapot is. So maybe there's a good reason why someone would have this. I can see the brown handle here. So my imagination tells me underneath this is all completely the same color. You can see a little bit of it in the lip right here. Um, but making it into, you know, this is once again, borrowing from the idea of a memory jug. Um, you could do, you know, a memory bowl, a me memory box, like whatever you could glue something to. You could, you know, do something similar, a vase. Um, but they did it using a teapot. And not only did they add buttons to this, but they also have, you know, some little glass pieces. This is part of a necklace chain and some other little miscellaneous pieces. And they created this memorial teapot. And especially if you are really into tea as a lot of people are nowadays, you know, great idea. You can't use it for tea, like after you've done that. So it would be a decorative, maybe centerpiece for the table. This is, a, of course, picture frames. Like you could go crazy with picture frames. And the only reason I'm showing this one is because in the center, they put an antique um, Valentine in the center. So if you have that special card that maybe your grandma or grandpa gave you and you really want to pay homage to them, that's another way of doing that. 
Um, necklaces, I'm not going to go over those. There are a thousand different ways to make necklaces. This is like making, you know, just, um, you know, a necklace that has a bunch of flat buttons on it. Um, there's a cup that's like a little charm string. There is one, but some of them are all charm strings. You can make them into the bib design. Um, there's like a lot of ways of doing that with buttons. And we looked at that. Um, here is another one using mother of pearl. Um, so, and these are like not significant mother of pearl, um, buttons. These are pretty plain, like super plain as a matter of fact. And they're on the less expensive spectrum of pearl, um, buttons. But as you can see, this person made a four tiered, you know, four strand necklace out of, you know, all of these buttons. So that's another idea, especially if you're a mother of pearl lover of like I am, you know, that's a great way to, you know, keep those buttons and do something cool with them. This um, is almost, in, almost, I say, in the style of a charm bracelet. And so they, once again, made a, ne a necklace, but this could be shortened into an anklet or into a bracelet as well. And also you can make this into a choker or a longer necklace. So that's part one of the things that you can do to really add value to your less expensive buttons and how you can recycle them and make some really cool, amazing things. And it is so easy to do this. Do not go out and buy anything to do this. Like this necklace actually could be made with a recycled um, necklace chain and you have earrings that are dangling earrings and they're falling apart you just take the long wire and just use it for something like this and and it doesn't have to all be the same color or the the same design like you know think farther outside of the box and actually those things sell better than the ones that are almost too purposeful. So if you have gold wires, copper wires, silver wires, mix it up. Just lay it out so you get an idea of what you want to do. Um, but thank you for tuning in. Please give us a thumbs up. At least it takes literally a mega second to click the little thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. It brings us up higher in the search engine so that we can help more people. Um, and also, if you can take the moment just to, you know, say hi in the comments, that would be appreciated. Um, and it could be simple as saying hi or leaving a smiley face emoji. Um, but if you want to say more, paragraphs can be typed down there if you have any questions, suggestions. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Velvet Lounge again. And I hope to make more of these videos for you on other subjects so that you can, you know, find your second gig or your side hustle as some people call it and you're able to um, do some interesting things not only with buttons but I'll go into some other areas um, especially if you're out there picking and you're like kind of looking over some things there are things that you could do with those other components that similar to buttons um, either have value that you didn't realize or that you can take an upcycle into something else easily. So thank you so much. And once again, give us a thumbs up. Have a good day.